Well, good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank you for attending our advantages of custom RF filters versus COTS in, debate, in demanding applications webinar. My name is Brian Nolan. I'm the Vice President of Sales here. Um, met several of you already. Uh, before we get started, I just want to let you know that you will all be muted during the presentation. If you have any questions uh, as Mark goes through the uh, presentation, please enter them into the questions panel located in the webinar control panel, and we'll try to get to them all at the end of the presentation. If, you, if we don't have time to go through them, then we will make sure to get back to you via email. Also, we will be recording this webinar, and we will be posting both recording and the slides on our website and YouTube channel. Our presenter today is Mark Stanley. He is our RF product manager. As Epic's RF product manager, Mark works directly with the customers to ensure the highest quality RF products. He has evolved from the point of sales inquiry through the design stages, manufacturing, product verification, and delivery to the customer. Mark brings more than 20 years of successful business creation and enterprising sales, design and manufacturing experience, strategic partnering, business development, team building, and OEM relations. Prior to Epic, Mark was the president of Putnam RF Filters, Inc. Putnam was founded in 2008 in Manchester, New Hampshire, and as a product engineering group for emerging technologies designed to serve the military and aerospace industries. So, enough for me. I'm going to turn it over to Mark. So, Mark, it's all yours. Thank you, Brian. So, again, thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate you being here as we kind of go through uh, our, our webinar. Um, so in a, in a world where so many goods have been commoditized and proprietary services have become generic, custom application specific products are still alive and well. And not only are they ideally suited to the intended purpose, but they are also less expensive and more readily available than most expect. Uh, so I want to again thank you for joining us today as we explore the advantages that a custom design uh, offers in the component marketplace. So our agenda today, we're going to go through a, a number of things. Uh, we're going to look at an application of a filter and we're going to overview, uh, have an overview on that. Uh, we're going to dive into the custom versus the COTS on both uh, design advantage sides of the things as well as the uh, cost differential um, and, and some other aspects of those uh, those two. And then we're going to go into a Q&A and hopefully you all have some good questions that we can answer for you, please. Uh, so custom versus COTS. We want to do some definitions here, really. Um, and some of it's self-explanatory, but we kind of want to go through it um, and, and put some finer points on it. Uh, from a custom side, a product that's designed to specific requirements is an easy way to define that one. Um, there's There's been a long standing engagement of, of custom products with the DOD. And we all know that, uh, we see that in, in, in virtually all of these application specific designs and there's reasons for that. Uh, primarily, uh, they offer, custom designs offer high performance, uh, and in this case, the high performance uh, means electrical and mechanical. Um, we have high reliability, which really comes from the environmental side of things, uh, because these custom products are designed uh, specifically for those applications. Um, COTS, or uh, commercial off-the-shelf design, uh, are products that are alternatives to customs. Uh, and these products are... Excuse me. The, and these products are, are really standard designs that have been uh, previously designed, inventoried, and put on websites available for, for purchase. These COTS have been also mandated by the DOD uh, over the years. And there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, two primarily is the procurement uh, cost savings. And this is driven cost savings wise by the fact that these COTS products are usually, uh, again, generic designs that are sold in higher quantities, which therefore give you a lower cost overall. 
the other side of, of using a cot uh, relative to the uh, mandate is that it reduces the cycle time, meaning time to market. And in this case, the products are stocked, you're able to purchase them, they come out of it, ship out of inventory, and, and you receive the product. So our performance against a spec limit. We want to look at our custom and, and kind of, again, define some of these things. Uh, we have a design that is created after a given spec is written. And this is relative to both system and component. So when, when it comes out with a, a spec and we have a system and component spec, these products are designed after all of that, which gives us some very distinct advantages. Uh, the system specs can be optimized for the application. And that's very critical in, in terms of their performance. Uh, and it also means that when we have this, that the products then are going to be specifically performing to the spec that is required. Alternatively, on the COT side, uh, the product is designed before the spec is written. And also on the system and component side, not to be lost, that it's before the spec is written, which again is not the most advantageous, sometimes for either piece, uh, which also means that the system specs need to conform to the available component instead of the other way around, which the custom offers. Uh, and often this just leads to a compromise of the system or the component against the spec. So we're going to look at an actual filter application, and we're going to go through a, a few things at a high level uh, of, of what is required and how we can compare the custom to the cot. So we're using a, an example of a bandpass filter that's going to be used in an antenna subsystem. So when you're looking at this antenna, the, we've got a spec of 2 dBi gain. Um, and that's a relative measure of an antenna's ability to direct RF energy in a specific direction. Um, and again, typically measured in DBI. Uh, within this system, we have an existing antenna design and an existing circulator design. And both of these are going to really drive the loss budget of the system. So we're going to have to look at a filter that's going to operate in the system properly. Based on the existing designs of the circulator, the antenna, we have a balance of an insertion loss budget that allows for 0.5 dB uh, of, of loss for the, the bandpass filter. So looking at the COTS product, we have a insertion loss spec of 0.7 dB. So clearly that causes some disadvantage, uh, causes some questions about what, what needs to be done in order to use the COTS product. So continuing on with the example, using the COTS product, we would either have to redesign the circulator or the antenna. Sorry for the disruption, folks. Minor technical glitch. Um, so in, in this, we'll just back up a bit. Um, we, we would have to do a couple of things in order to use a COTS product. We would either have to redesign the circulator or the antenna or both in order to achieve or free up that two-tenths of a dB of insertion loss in order to use the COTS product. That's a fairly costly and time sensitive activity. So when using the custom filter, right, there's some distinct advantages there that we would go and design a custom here. Uh, uh, we would first of all design the operating frequency to only be in the band of interest with no 
extra bandwidth whatsoever. So what does this do for us? This gives us a part that has less resonating elements because we reduce the bandwidth very specifically to the application. This will allow us to have a superior loss spec, which we can will beat the loss spec of a, of a COTS product and get us closer or within spec of that half a dB. It will also uh, allow lower overall loss at the specified bandwidth and the band edges. Uh, and, and the rejection will also be improved uh, because of the bandwidth uh, being specified per the system specs. Uh, overall, this leaves us with a less complex design because it's not as broadband and it's not, it's not as um, mechanically complicated, again, using less resonating elements. Ultimately, what this gives us is really a more cost-effective solution to the problem. So using a COTS filter, on the other hand, uh, and kind of pointing back a little bit, the, the COTS filter is going to be more of a generic use product. So it's going to have a broader bandwidth that's required by the system, which is going to drive some of the complexities. It's going to have a, require, a, a steeper rejection because of the bandwidth, uh, also not helpful. Um, and then the band edges uh, start closer to those rejection limits, which also drive up the loss. So looking at some of the design advantages out of that example, we're going to look at a custom, and again, as it's designed to meet a particular spec, we have a form factor that can be specified very clearly to fit the system requirements. And this covers a number of things. As from a form factor wise, the most important of these are the overall footprint of the device. So it's, it's length, width, height, uh, materials that go into it, uh, launch points for the input and output, whether that be connectorized or pin launch as in this example, uh, or even mounting points of the device into a chassis uh, in, inside the system. All of those things can be determined at the design level and can be customized to the system. On the COT side, as you can understand, the system is designed based on a COTS form factor. So really that's a limitation, right? It's a limitation to your capability to design your system. So if you want to put, and again, we've got a, a, an image here of a pin launch SSS filter that has been highly customized to a specific application not only electrically, but also from a form factor, where we have specific launch points and specific mounting uh, types that allow this thing to fit into exactly how the designer uh, would request or would fit best for their system. Uh, so unfortunately, in the cost side, again, they would have to modify any of those layouts, pin launch locations, mounting locations, just to fit that cot size. So some of the things that we are by mandate really are price driven. And the reality is that some of those things are unnecessary features that we don't really need or don't really want relative to the, the system requirements. So on a custom side, we won't design in those features. We're not going to design in things, excess bandwidth that give you excess loss. We're only going to give you the necessary features for what you request. Um, and this aspect of it overall can drive the cost lower on a custom device than a COTS device, which again, many people don't think that. So from a COTS device, it's a device, obviously, it'll satisfy the spec. Um, relative to the broadband and, and relative to the, the basic features, but it's not needed, some of those things, in the applications, which, again, drives up the cost because it's more of a generic design, it more, has more complexity, uh, and, and, again, can, can drive up some of the cost on it. 
And one of those cost factors flows down into the idea of a forecasted revision. So with a COTS product, you're already locked into the specs. You have a product that's been, again, pre-designed. You're locked into those specs. And going forward, the specs may only be applicable to your current revision of your system. If there are any changes in frequency or there are any changes in power, well, you're kind of out of luck in going forward and having to be able to have modifications done there. So a product obsolescence uh, of that COTS product really puts a pinch on future builds of that, of that system. And then the system will need to be revised in order to take advantage of another COTS product. So a distinct advantage here in differentiator on a custom is that we can, at the beginning of a design cycle on a custom, some of those potential forecasted revisions can be already kind of pre-designed into the device or thought about. Some of the DFM work can, can take into account that, as an example, if you were going forward with, with other frequencies that drive this, we might give it a mechanical footprint that would allow for that to occur within the existing footprint. But it would obviously cover any potential revisions or enhancements to the system, uh, which, which allow, again, for overall versatility of the system uh, life cycle and give, again, the custom a, an opportunity to, uh, to satisfy the need much better than it costs. So on the custom side, we have a, a re revision version um, versus starting from scratch. And what we're trying to say here really is that the, the, the first revision of the, of the design may not really cover the, the future spec. But when there is a revision or there is a future spec, you're not starting from scratch. You don't, you don't start all over again uh, from a, a, a footprint standpoint and a topology standpoint. You're going to go and start from the existing design as your launch point. And we're going to go take all that mechanical criteria and all the electrical criteria, and we're going to go and revise that as in, into the advanced version. That cuts down some of the, the design time, cuts down some of the effort, and it actually becomes cost and time effective. On the COTS revision, well, you're, you're going to have to revise the system, not the component, not the filter. Uh, and so when you think about having to revise a antenna or revise a circulator, or revise other pieces of the system, uh, that is a much more costly um, process and, and certainly cost and time prohibitive. So looking at our cost of our, the differentials between our cost of, of a custom versus a COTS, interestingly enough, all the custom components that have uh, a, a, a bomb are very similar to those in a COTS part. So there's similar pricing relative to that component that's in those in between the two. And the difference really is driven by the volume savings that is, comes from a, in a COTS product from a, a broad based design and a cross platform use. So a lot more volume is being um, produced on the cot side, which again is going to drive some of that cost down. So the custom components, though, provide cost savings um, as no system revisions or, or compensation has to be required for uh, maintaining spec. So when you think about how the the, the system cost uh, revision kind of compares to a component cost revision, uh, it's much more expensive. So one thing we, we want to talk about a little bit is, is the investment uh, up front on, on a custom part. And certainly, 
added prototyping, development stages, there are, there are more costs. So it is a little bit more expensive up front. But as you go through that process and move into production, uh, that investment can be amortized uh, and, and can be reduced uh, over, over the production run. So the custom prices can actually match COTS prices, if not sometimes beat COTS prices uh, at a production volume, certainly. However, the bigger driver is that you have superior for performance, you have better form fit function, uh, and an overall a, a more compatible part. So in, the, in defense of COTS, um, there, there are cost savings. Uh, and again, a higher volume, meaning the part is being produced and sold at higher volumes, not necessarily for the system that we're talking about here, but overall it's going to return a, a lower component cost, which means it's a lower overall unit cost. Uh, there also to be considered is the lack of NRE, uh, non-recurring engineering, uh, that is going to give you some cost savings as well. So that'll give you overall perhaps uh, lower upfront component cost, um, which is helpful. So in a little bit of a summary here, uh, looking at our, our custom versus our COTS, on our custom side, we have a minimal cost delta to a COTS, and this is attributed to a number of things, that we're using common components, uh, we're, we're not revising system, we're only revising parts, all giving better uh, re return relative to design time and, and human effort relative to those things. Of course, higher performance. Always having a higher performance, which gives you a lower cost of ownership overall. And then there's a lower risk going with a custom. Because when you have a custom that's been designed very specifically for the system and all of the specs from environmental to power to electrical to mechanical, all of those things have been factored in to the custom design, whereas the COTS product, maybe, maybe not. And in fairness to the COTS product, you have a lower cost, potentially. You're a little bit faster to market. But again, it comes at a potentially lower performance envelope and overall a higher total cost of ownership, really driven by the fact that you are unable to make revisions to the product, uh, to the filter, and really all of those revisions have to drive back up to the system level, which again is a very high cost of ownership. So that pretty much concludes our webinar. I wanted to appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, well, Mark reviewed some of the questions that came in. I um, wanted to briefly mention some of the other additional PCB-based PCB products we have here at Epic. Um, next slide, please, Mark. So um, our products here include, for those that, that don't know, um, custom battery packs, flex and rigid flex PCBs, our high reliability smart human machine interfaces, our cable assemblies, and our core product solution, which is printed circuit boards. Um, next slide, please, Mark, and try to take some of the questions that came in. I am reviewing. So we do have a few. Um, So first one I have here is, can a COTS be form fit function reverse engineered if it becomes obsolete? Uh, well, that certainly is possible. Um, where we would wanna do that is take that and potentially make improvements to the product, uh, not any form fit function improvements, but uh, improvements to the process and perhaps the performance. And uh, but yes, certainly a form fit function reverse engineered product can be derived, uh, which would again, again, going back to what we talked about a little bit, would re eliminate some of that angst about uh, future revisions using a COTS. Um, 
Another one here, what drives the reliability improvement of a custom over COTS? Um, well, I guess there's there's a lot of details that control this aspect of reliability, but I would say primarily the that DFM work uh, up front uh, that is tailored to environmental specifications, power handling, thermal management. Uh, th those are a few. Uh, I think that there is uh, there are others, but those are probably the most important ones. Um, they all contribute to improvements uh, that are really not considered in a broad-based use COTS product, uh, again, because it's driven by a particular spec. So uh, when you look at a high-reliability product in the field, having a DFM process that accounts for all of those environmental requirements uh, is, is very important. And we've got another one here. If COTS can be purchased off the shelf to reduce lead times, how long does it take to deliver a custom design? Well, that goes back to the whole narrative in the beginning of it, it is more advantageous than you might expect. And I think that when you look at it, we can des designs that are custom can be delivered in as little as four weeks. And that is full form fit function, uh, deliverable hardware. Um, and they are dependent upon, right, timelines are dependent upon complexity of the design, um, uh, specs that require uh, environmental testing. Uh, so there's a lot of things that drive that schedule, but uh, can be very quick turn in this world of, of component design. So at this point, we're kind of running short on time, so we wanted to say thank you again. Uh, appreciate you coming and uh, look forward to hearing from you.